Hi, this is Mike Schmitz, and welcome to another edition of Screencasts Online. In this episode, we'll be taking a look at MimeStream, a native macOS email client specifically built for Gmail. MimeStream combines the power of macOS with Gmail's advanced email features to let you move through your email effortlessly. It only works with the Gmail service though, so if you're looking for an IMAP email client, you'll have to look somewhere else. MimeStream is unapologetically a Gmail-only client, combining Gmail's powerful keyboard shortcuts and server-side filters with the beauty and speed of a well-made native Mac app. If you're a Gmail user who loves the speed of Gmail's web interface, but you want something that looks and feels like it belongs on your Mac, then MimeStream is for you. In this screencast, we'll walk through the basic settings of MimeStream and show the related features along the way. We'll cover setting up accounts, organizing profiles, creating message templates, setting up email filters, using the beta snooze features, and more. All right, so here we are in MimeStream, and the application is broken into three separate panes. On the far left pane, we have our inboxes, we have our favorites, and then a list of all of the accounts that we have added. As of right now, I just have one account added, and that is the SCO demo account. We'll take a look at how to add more accounts in just a second. The next pane is showing the messages that meet the selection from that first pane. So I have the primary inbox selected, and it's showing me the three messages that are in that primary inbox. Now there are a couple other types of inboxes here as well. And again, these come from Gmail. So Gmail attempts to sort our messages into the appropriate buckets, and it does that automatically. We can also train this by dragging messages into the appropriate buckets. So this is my primary inbox. This is the place where we want the most important messages to be. And then we've got the social inbox, and this is where all of the notifications from the social networks that we are involved with would show up. Then we've got promotions, which are all of the promotional emails from the products and services and companies that were on their newsletters because we want to get coupons and things like that. Then there's the updates section, which will show us the quick updates of things that we need to be aware of. And then there's the forums section, and this is where all the messages and notifications from the forums that were members of would show up. As you can see, as I go through these different inboxes, when I select an inbox and view the message that's in that inbox, it marks that message as red, and the counter next to the inbox name goes away or goes down, indicating only the number of unread messages in those inboxes. To the right of the messages list is the content for the currently selected message. As we select a different message, the contents in this window will change. Okay, now before we dive into the application itself, let's take a look at the settings and point out a couple of important things here before we get too far. And in the general section here, we have an option to group messages into conversations. I'll keep that checked. We can adjust the text size. We can choose the keyboard shortcuts that we want to use. Now, right now it's using the Gmail keyboard shortcuts. Those are the ones that I prefer. But if you're coming from Apple Mail and you prefer the Apple Mail keyboard shortcuts, you can select those as well, or select the built-in default shortcuts for the application itself. I like the Gmail keyboard shortcuts because there are shortcuts for just about anything and they are very easy to execute. So for example, archiving a message in Apple Mail is shift command A, it requires three separate keystrokes, but archiving a message in Gmail, you just have to press the E key. So I find it much easier to process my email from my keyboard in Gmail using these Gmail keyboard shortcuts to the point where I go out of my way looking for an application that supports these keyboard shortcuts specifically. Next, we can choose what happens when we press the delete key. Right now, it's gonna send a message to the trash, but we can also prompt for a preference we can archive and remove the current label. We could archive and remove the inbox that it's associated with. I'm gonna leave this as trash. That's just a quick preview of one of this week's Apple-related tutorials from Screencasts Online. Screencasts Online is your premium source of Apple-related video tutorials. All of our members get access to brand new, up-to-date tutorials each week as well as unlimited access to our entire video archive full of Mac and iOS related tutorials. 
you can stream and download all of our videos on your Mac, iPad and iPhone, and even your Apple TV using the Members Only Screencasts Online Apple TV app. Membership also includes a complimentary subscription to the Digital Screencasts Online monthly magazine, published each month and packed with videos, articles, reviews, as well as hints and tips covering all aspects of the Mac, iPad, iPhone and all of the other fantastic Apple products. So, if you're ready to start getting the most out of your Apple devices, visit ScreencastsOnline.com today and become a ScreencastsOnline member.